my beloved home, the state of Mississippi, should be a blue state. And it should not be close. This should be a democratic stronghold. And I'm going to explain why. Before I do, though, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I am your homeboy first, and this is the realest, most entertaining show in the game. Put it on some. Again, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that share button, and put all your people on it. Um, again, I want to reiterate, this is my beloved home. Okay, this is my beloved home. Uh, I know there are uh, there are a lot of people who make jokes about Mississippi. There are a lot of people who say, uh, uh, how, how can you be black and still live in Mississippi? There are a lot of people who think we are such a backward state and that we're walking around barefoot around here and that we still have all these sundown towns. And any negative thing you can think of, okay? They attach it to my Mississippi. Now, some of that is because uh, pretty much my entire life, and I just turned 40, my state has routinely been ranked low in anything good and ranked high in things that are bad. You know, when it comes to education, when it comes to, uh, we've been ranked low historically. When it comes to per capita income, we've been ranked low historically. But when it comes to um, obesity, we've been ranked high. When it comes to STDs, we've been ranked high. Um, and of course, y'all know the history, the legacy of racism in my beloved home state. But I still love my home. I still love my home. I love the land. I love the people. Okay. I love uh, that this is the blackest state in the United States of America. Okay. No other state in these United States has a higher percentage of black people than the state of Mississippi. It's one of those reasons why it took me a while to understand that term urban. Motherfuckers always be talking about urban radio and urban clothing and when they be talking about something that's black. And I'm like, what the fuck? Because I live in Mississippi. You could be in a, a, a urban place like uh, Jackson or you can be in the country. And you're going to see black folks here in Mississippi. We everywhere here. Uh, but I get it. In these other states throughout the country, particularly in the north and the west, you just see the black folks in the city. You see them in Philadelphia. You see them in Detroit. You see them in L.A. You see them in Milwaukee. You feel me? It ain't like that here in Mississippi. We everywhere, Jack. And I love that. Uh, I love that we say y'all. I, I love that. I I hate to hear motherfuckers talking about some you all and you guys. Fuck that. We say y'all here. I like that. Okay. I like uh, uh uh I like to eat catfish on a Friday night. I like that. I like the blues. I like that. I like the the uh the gospel music that I heard in church when I was growing up. I like that. Okay. Uh, I like that we say yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, just just because that's just what we do. I like that we speak to strangers, you know, just common courtesy. I like that about us. I like that. But I don't like the way my beloved Mississippi votes, particularly my white brothers and sisters in this state. Because they are the reason this is a deeply red state. Their commitment to the Republican Party. Oh, actually, I should say their commitment to conservatism. Because we know once upon a time they were Democrats. They, you know, uh, Mississippi used to be a part of the solid South. The solid blue South of the Democrats. You know, when they were the Dixiecrats. Uh, but we know they, they fled 
the Democratic Party after the Civil Rights Movement. So their commitment to social conservatism, to race pride and um, their, their views on abortion and the views on homosexuality, you know, all these social issues that make them vote uh, for the conservative ticket. However, when you get to talking dollars and cents, it only makes common damn sense for white people in the state of Mississippi, by and large, to vote for the Democratic ticket, to join most of their black brothers and sisters and vote for the Democratic ticket. It just makes sense. When per capita, we are the poorest state. The, Medicaid is something that, that is needed not only by black people. That program wasn't uh, put in place just because of black people. We only make up 13% of this whole fucking nation. Uh, a program that vast and that important wasn't just made for 13% of the population. There are many white people who use Medicaid. I've seen many of them. See, I've spent a lot of time in hospitals over these past five years as I've been, six years now, really, that I've been, you know, really caregiving for my mother. And uh, there are just black people that I see at the hospital, y'all. There aren't just Hispanics that I see at the hospital, y'all. I see a whole lot of white people at the hospital, and many of them don't look like they have much. Just off the eye test, many of them don't look like they are in the middle class. So I wonder to myself, how are they getting health care? How are they getting health care? And I know damn well many of them are getting it through Medicaid, which I state refuse to expand Medicaid, even though the Affordable Care Act would allow them to do so. I know a lot of them uh, uh, if they're elderly are getting their health care through Medicare, which is something that liberals, a liberal administration, Lyndon Baines Johnson, he, he's the one who signed off on Medicare and Medicaid, and now it's, it's been liberals throughout the years who, uh, for the most part, protected that. I know George W. Bush uh, expanded it some, uh, I think, to, co to cover prescription drugs, if I'm not mistaken, which his party slammed him for that. <laughs> Ain't that a bitch? We did do something to help motherfuckers. Your party slammed you for it. That's what folks... I, I, I'm voting for here in my state. And we need the fucking help. Not just black people. I'm telling you, I'm in these hospitals, I'm in these emergency rooms and I'm looking around and I'm seeing poor white people, working class white people, lower middle class white people. Middle class white people. Like, I ain't seen nobody rich. I'm looking around. And I'm seeing motherfuckers struggling just like me. Trying to keep their loved one alive, man. See, that's the thing about it. Sickness and death does not give a fuck what race you are, what ethnicity you are, what uh, 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 socioeconomic status you have. Sickness and death does not give a fuck. So I've seen America. I wish both presidential candidates would goddamn walk through hospitals you can really see america walk through schools you can really see america you feel me you really see america see people when they're suffering see people when they're trying to learn and grow see people when they're suffering in the hospitals you can see them when they're trying to learn and grow in schools you really see america man they need to see it see in this race we only got one candidate who's talking like she really understands the plight of people who are trying to 
make it and trying to take care of their loved ones, trying to help their loved ones survive and the goddamn and trying to survive themselves. And that's Kamala Harris. That's Kamala Harris. See, it's so insulting to me that some motherfuckers will say, well, you're just voting for Kamala Harris because she's black. Like, I can't tell the goddamn difference between a motherfucker like Kamala Harris and somebody like Clarence Thomas. Like, I can't tell the difference between Kamala Harris and Byron Donalds or Tim Scott. I can tell the difference. I can tell the difference. You feel me? Because I pay attention to the policies. See, people don't give us, as black people, credit for that. Us listening to uh, uh, what these motherfuckers are actually saying from a policy standpoint. Okay, and for oh, you on the Democratic plantation, no motherfucker, I agree with that policy. And Kamala Harris just announced a policy that that spoke to me personally and what I'm going through in my life. Okay, and I know millions of people are going through this as well. Because when I post about my mother's journey and how she's battling cancer and all of the complications that have come with it. So many real ones around the world, they say they're praying for me, but they also say, I went through the same thing. The vice president of the United States, she went through the same thing with her mother. I want y'all to listen to this clip. Listen to this clip. Listen to her words. And listen to the policy that she is proposing. I took care of my mother when she was sick. She was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. And so it is a personal experience for me as well as something I care deeply about. Um, you know, taking care of a, mm. a, a parent... Um, you know, that means trying to cook what they want to eat, right. mm -hmm. what they can eat. It means picking out clothes for them that doesn't, this, soft enough that it doesn't irritate their skin, right. right? It means trying to think of something funny to, to make them laugh or smile. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's so much about that that really is about giving folks dignity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to your point about being in the sandwich generation, there are so many people in our country who are right in the middle. They're taking care of their kids and they're taking care of their aging parents. Mm -hmm. And it's just almost impossible to do it all, especially if they work. We're finding that so many are then having to leave their job, which means losing a source of income. Yeah. Not to mention the emotional stress. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, what I am proposing is that basically what we will do is allow Medicare to cover in-home health care. Oh, my God. Right. So, and because we're talking about these kinds of things where it's just about helping an aging parent or person, um, you know, prepare a meal, um, you know, put their sweater on. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's about dignity for that individual. It's about independence yeah. for that individual. Oh, yes. I mean, what, people are of declining skills to some extent, but their dignity has, their pride has not declined. No. They want to they stay in their home. They don't want to go somewhere else. Plus, for the family to send them to a residential care facility to hire somebody is yeah. so expensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and wipes you out. And, 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 and I'll just say, well, but here's the other thing about it. So, you know, people say, well, how are you going to pay for it? Here, yeah. Here's the thing. Here's how we pay for it. Part of what I also intend to do is allow Medicare to continue to negotiate drug prices against these big pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. yes. which means we are going to save Medicare the money because we're not going to be paying these high prices. Right. And that those resources are best then put in a way that helps a family like the one you are describing. Which, which you have already done. Which we insulin. have already right. done yeah. with yeah. insulin. Yeah. So it can be done. It absolutely can be done. And it has it has to be about just seeing what's happening. And and it's such a burden that's emotional, financial, physical. Mm -hmm. Care is about physical work. Yes. And, and helping people do what they rightly want and need to be able to do. Are we
That is some of the realest shit I've ever heard a politician say in my 40 years on this earth. That woman just spoke my life because she lived to an extent my life. Now, some may say, well, you just want a handout from the government. Bullshit. Bullshit. What I need is help, like so many of us do. Right now, we got Americans suffering from the uh, 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 the effects of two deadly hurricanes. They need help. I'm not opposed to those people uh, getting the help that they need from the federal government. They can't control the weather. Now, some may say, well, they shouldn't be living there. Uh, it is their personal responsibility. Come on, man. Come on, man. They need our help. Those people, many of them, most of them, born there. Most people, you live where you're born. You love where you're born. And these areas are productive areas for our country. These areas, these, these people in these areas are, are workers. They're, they're teachers and firemen and police officers and doctors and lawyers and uh, 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 manufacturers and everything in between. They are Americans who need help because something out of their control greatly affected their lives. Well, that's the same thing for a motherfucker like me. It is. It's the same thing for people who uh, get on Medicaid or who depend on their Social Security check, okay? Or in my mama's case, depend on Medicare to be... If it was not for Medicare, my mama would be dead. There's no way in the hell we could have paid for completely everything she's gone through. No way. But my mother has been an asset to this society. My mother was the wife of a Marine. My father shed blood for this country. My father killed for this country. Okay? My mother is a was the wife of a Marine. My mama taught school for over 40 years. So that there are countless children whose lives were better because of my mother. My mother has been a taxpayer. You understand me? So she ain't no fucking freeloader. My mother has been an asset to the United States of America. God damn it, I am an asset to, to the United States of America. I was a teacher for 10 years. An award-winning teacher. I won teacher of the year three times from three different administrators and at two different schools. You understand me? I taught U.S. history. My students had very high test scores, especially given uh, their reading abilities. Okay? Central office where, you know, the uh, where the higher-ups are in the district, they would be shocked. How is this man out here doing that with these kids who their their English scores are here, but their U.S. history scores are here. That means their reading ability is low, but somehow he's still able to do that. How is he doing that? That's the kind of teacher I was. Father figure. That's the kind of teacher I was. Motivator. That's the kind of teacher I was. Oh, and I was a basketball coach as well. We won championships. I was a track coach as well. We won championships. District championships, uh, uh, state runner up. I was great at what I did. I parlayed that into educational consulting. I own an entertainment company, IG Entertainment. I own a t shirt company, Statement Tees. I contribute to this society. But see, Kamala Harris gets it that having to take care of my mother hurts my businesses. It hurts my businesses. 
Every day that I had to tend to my mother is a day that I can't go out there on the road and provide um, consulting services where I make considerable money on a uh, on a per day basis. So that's money that's taken out of the economy. That's money I could have made for my family. That's money that I'm going to pay taxes on. You feel me? That's money that I would use that money and spend and maybe take my kids on a trip. That, uh, um, maybe buy me a truck that I've been wanting for some time. Maybe up, do an upgrade on the house. See, having to do this, having to care give like this, it, it, it it hurts me financially and therefore hurts my ability to contribute to the economy. You see what I'm saying? She gets that. She understands that. Donald Trump don't know nothing about that. Donald Trump ain't thinking that deeply about shit but himself. And see, I'm not the only person in who, in Mississippi who's going through that. We are one of the sickest states in America. So I know damn well I am not the only person who is going through what I'm going through. Now, many may not be in the position I am uh, from a business standpoint where I can uh, uh, um, basically make my own schedule around taking care of my mother. And that allows me to truly be more hands-on than maybe others. But see, that's that's even heartbreaking. Okay, that means somebody out there can't tend to them. Somebody out there may love their parent as much as I love my mom, but they can't tend to their parent because they got to go to work. Like, they can't go into business. They can't make their own schedule. So they would love to be at the hospital with their loved one, but they got to go to work. See, if that was me, my mother would be dead. Their parent might die because they can't be there with them. Their parent might die because they can't, they, they don't make enough money to hire somebody to be there with them. That should not be so in the richest country on planet Earth. Should not be so. That should not be so. So, yes, Mississippi should be a blue state because there are policies, there are policies that liberal lawmakers like Kamala Harris are trying to put forth to help people like me and like many of you here in the state of Mississippi. So think about dollars and cents. Talking to all my white brothers and sisters out there, particularly. And any of the black men out there. You know, Kamala uh, is doing worse with black men than uh, uh, Barack Obama did, for instance. Or uh, a lot of different Democratic candidates. Like, like Trump is doing better with black men than any Republican I can think of since I started voting. First time, first presidential election that I participated in was 2004. Trump is doing better with black men than uh, who was that in 2004? That was George W. Bush. In 08, it was McCain. In 12, it was Romney. Trump, of all motherfucking people, Trump is more openly racist than, than any politician I've seen in my lifetime. Okay? And I've studied them. I've studied them. When I say let me not say politician, any national politician uh, or any presidential candidate. Let me be thorough. Let me be thorough. Okay. This motherfucker is more openly racist than any presidential uh, candidate in my lifetime. Ronald Reagan was a racist motherfucker, but he wasn't openly racist. It makes no sense that Trump is doing better with black men. So, brothers, think about policies. Think about your own life. Think about dollars. Think about cents. Think about uh, your parents who may be dependent on Social Security and Medicare. Think about um, your girl. You know, if you ain't making enough money and, and, and y'all got to get Medicaid or y'all got to get WIC, or, you know what I'm talking about? You know, when you have kids. 
it ain't about being lazy. It's hard working motherfuckers out here. Hell, I was a teacher. I was a teacher going to work every day teaching kids. I was working 12 hours a day at least. And still we qualified for WIC. And I had to swallow, swallow my motherfucking pride and take my ass over there and get that shit. Because formula was so expensive. Life is real out here, man. It ain't just black folk going through it. So think dollars and cents. Think about policies that impact you personally. Fuck all this social shit. First, uh, uh, get off the race. If you're racist, I can't sway you. Okay? If you feel like you're just the supreme race you want to uphold white supremacy, goddammit, I can't sway you. Good luck with that bullshit. Good luck with that bullshit. Okay? But if you're voting for the conservatives based off uh, uh, their stance on gay marriage. Come on, man. Who's somebody else fucking ain't got nothing to do with you? Don't worry about that. You got more important shit to worry about in your life. If you were voting for the conservative ticket based off your views on uh, transgender people, don't worry about that. Somebody, uh, somebody who was born a man and now wants uh, wants to be a woman. God damn it, that ain't got shit to do with you. That's their business. That's their business. That's how I look at it. Ain't got shit to do with me. I got too much shit to worry about than to give a fuck about that. If you're voting for the conservative ticket based on your views on abortion, talk to women. Have some deep conversations with women. That's what I had to do because I was pro-life with exceptions. So I had a deep, deep, deep conversation with my wife about the many reasons why a woman might want to have an abortion outside of, oh, you know, they had a good night with your man. Y'all didn't use nothing. You got pregnant. Now you want to, you know, end the pregnancy. You know, there's so many other situations, bro, that, uh, you know, we as guys might not think about. You feel me? Think about these dollars and cents. And by that metric, it only makes sense that Mississippi becomes a blue state. Put it on some. The easiest way to support me and my company is to hit that subscribe button and follow me across all social media platforms, okay? If you want more truth, if you want more than real, it costs you nothing to hit that button. Go ahead and do that for me. I appreciate y'all. One.